Have you ever wondered why you can't stop binge eating? Like what is making you feel so out of control? Like this careening, like you're on a ship and you're doing something terribly bad that is morally wrong. Today I'm going over the four reasons that are interrelated that cause people to binge eat uncontrollably. And I'll give a little tip for each of these on how you can implement them. So if you do find this content valuable, go ahead and give it a thumbs up or just leave a quick review. That'd be awesome. Really, really appreciate it. And lastly, there's a link down below where I go over this philosophy of weight loss enlightenment, how by letting go of obsession with weight loss, you can actually lose weight, how you can actually uh, focus on habits and your well-being and making yourself happy, and you will lose weight. That video is down below. Now, for the four tips, um, these first really came to mind for me when I was working with a girl named Kat. Now, you can see her uh, story on my website, but I'll just get to the point. She would always go out on weekends, she'd follow the diet during the week, and then she would binge eat at these festivals and carnivals and, and like parties and stuff over the weekend. And sometimes she said she would eat so much that like she'd have to go home early. There was the, the instance before she called me was when she overate so much food that she couldn't go out with her friend. She like, they were pre-gaming and she ended up eating too much food to go out and party with her friend. It was really, really embarrassing. So she knew she had a problem. And um, she, Kat was just sort of the standard, not the standard binge eater, but she was not throwing up. She was just emotionally eating and uh, binge eating. So when I taught her these four things, she was able to see the big picture about her struggles and she was able to make systematic changes. And we found out that she wasn't a binge eater, she was a chronic dieter. And I'll go into that distinction in, in a little bit. But um, let's go through these four. The four are, the, four, the first reason people binge eat is they're not physically hungry. And this is the easiest dilemma to talk about. The second to, to address, to actually fix in your life. The second one is rigid rules. We'll get to that. The third is emotional stuff, dealing with your emotions. Um, and the fourth is actually self-care. So let's go through the first one. I said the first one is physical and it's the easiest one. They're all not easy, but out of those four, this is the easiest. Um, it's physical. So when you are used to a diet, oftentimes you under eat. Like Kat, she was at a 1500 calorie diet. She wasn't eating enough food. So of course, over the weekend, she would overeat to regain that food. So you cannot chronically starve yourself. Now, this is really, really important to understand that when you binge eat, you end up, un you, you end up gaining weight. So even if you lost like five or 10 pounds during the week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever, when you binge eat, it, you gain all that weight back and, and more. So you cannot stop, you cannot try to lose weight by, uh, by depriving yourself or uh, cutting your calories. This is only gonna lead to an, a swing up. So physical, there's two, there's two things that people do. <coughs> One, they under eat, like Kat was doing. Two, they don't eat regularly enough, they don't eat um, they let maybe 10 hours go by, sometimes more without eating. And if you do that, you're, you're gonna, that's why you get uncontrollable. This it help, it helps explain the uncontrollable nature of it, is that when you are deprived, your body controls you. Your body thinks it's dying, so it forces you to eat. It literally forces you to eat. You cannot stop this. This is why understanding the physical reasons are so important to stop binge eating. This is the foundation. It's very straightforward. The other principles are less straightforward. You know, let's go to the next one. Rigid rules. A rigid rule is easy to understand but hard to spot in your own life. A rigid rule looks like something like, my rule is to have eggs for breakfast or, or some rule like, my, my rule is to have only a few amount of carbs per day. Say like two, 200 calories of carbs or whatever. That's a rule, it's rigid, it's, 
It's black and white. The danger of a rule is that when you break the rule, you say, WTF, what the hell? <laughs> I, since I failed today, I'm just going to say, screw it, and eat all the food that I want to. This is what happens when you have a rule that is pass or fail. When you fail, you end up failing hard. So you have to identify your rules and take more moderate positions on these. Um, the key again is going back to that realization that when you binge eat, you gain even more weight than you lost and it's a pattern. So it's insanity to keep using the willpower to stop eating. It's insanity to use rules and willpower to lose weight. You need to listen to your body and you need to be able to be mentally aware of the different rules that come up. So how you can identify a rule is notice what foods are off limit for you. So if I say to you, go have that chocolate cake over there, go have a piece of that chocolate cake, there are some people who say, no, it's against my rules to have chocolate cake. If you have that come up for any food, you can make a list of food and then see if that reaction comes up. That is a sign you have a, a food rule and that is gonna, it's gonna bite you. Because eventually there's gonna be some day where you say, oh, I'll just have a little bit of chocolate cake, a little bit, and then bam, you're 10 slices deep and you've regained all the weight. The third reason is emotional. Now, this means you cannot, you, you, you can use food to cope with emotions. You know, emotional eating gets this bad rap. Um, the danger is when you only use food to cope with emotions. So you, this happens a fair amount of the time when people are, um, it usually happens, it, the pattern develops in childhood around maybe middle school, give or take, and a child is feeling stress and a kid is feeling stressed, so they eat food to feel better. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe you had some parents that ignored you or um, didn't take care of your needs, and so you, you uh, comforted yourself with food. You felt better by using food. And unfortunately, if you started at a young age, it means that you've been relying on food instead of learning how to nurture and soothe yourself. These are skills that you can learn, but you must recognize that food as a way to comfort yourself just doesn't work and that there are other ways. So this is a skill that you can learn. Now, the last thing is, um, the last thing is, what was the last thing? Number four, I'm blanking right now. Um... Do, 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 Well, you get to see me blank out for a little bit or listen to me. It'll come to me one second. I'm doing this stuff from uh, just my heart right now and, and doing research. I usually put together show notes, um, but I don't read them. I try to memorize it so I can be more spontaneous and real with you. Um, okay, it's going to come. Oh, yeah, self-care. Boom. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Okay, self-care is very similar to emotions. It's basically um, the, the you got to sleep enough. You got to sleep. <laughs> you know, you got to have some time to relax at night. You, there's a, the conversation on how you take care of yourself is a rich and nuanced conversation. Um, but when you lack self-care, it makes everything worse. It, it really does. So that's why self-care is such a, an important part. And I just named two practical ways. Embrace getting sleep, all right? Oftentimes we have this myth in society that if you're productive, you're valuable. And that if you're not being productive, you're missing out. You're not being good enough. You're not living up to the best version, best version of yourself. And we have to realize that sleep enables us to be the best version of ourself. We have to realize that taking some time to heal is so important and you know it in your heart. So here's what you can do if you're interested in learning more about these four. Down below there's just a quick link. It's called weight loss enlightenment for weightlossenlightenment.com forward slash 15 mins 1515 M I N S. And you can schedule just a quick 15 minute call with me 
where we're going to address one of these points. I can give you a solid golden nugget that's going to help you stop losing control around food in 15 minutes. If you want to schedule a longer complimentary call where we can cover all four, you'll have an opportunity to do so at the end of that 15 minute call. So that link is down below. If you have any other questions, just don't hesitate to reach out, leave a comment, send me a message. Have a good one. Peace.